Season 2, Episode 7. Welcome to the Baseline Feed Podcast. This is our seventh episode this season, and all of your support has been amazing. We must thank you for all of your continued support. Are you a writer or a voice actor looking for a place to show off what you're capable of? We could work with you. We have opened our submissions for Season 3 for your short story. Send your short story to submissions at BaselineFeed.com or send a voice demo to casting at BaselineFeed.com. If you're not ready with a demo tape, feel free to contact us and we'll help you with a simple audition. Also, you can check out our website at BaselineFeed.com for more information. In this story, you'll meet Ecti, a special blacksmith forging formidable weapons. But for who and what for? It's up to you to discover that in a story brought to you by Joanna Michael Hoyt with the voices of C.M. Peters, Rebecca Mersinger, Katie Tatry, Catherine Via, and Julia Wood. On behalf of the Baseline Feed team, we hope you enjoy Ecti's Mirror. Come in. She looks, not at the door on the wall, but at the door's reflection in the mirror. Ecti sees the customer's reflected face, clenched with wanting and resenting. Beside it, another woman's face, beautiful, smooth, and full of itself as an egg. That woman is not standing in the doorway beside the customer. She is laughing inside the customer's skull. She is the reason the customer has come. Ecti drops the newly shaped chain link from the anvil into the cooling pail, where it hisses and steams. What do you want? A bracelet. A necklace or a brooch. Something my sister will want and not have for once in her life. Ecti keeps listening after the customer stops speaking and nods. You will not give it to her or sell it to her. You will let her see it. She will want it. She will steal it. It will do her harm, and she will know no better than to blame herself. Don't blame me, if you knew her. Have I blamed you? Have I told you what to do with the thing you have asked for? Only pay the price, and I will make what you want. I have money. I do not need that. I only need what it takes to make what you want. I have the copper and the gold. Good. This is part of the price. (laughs) What else? Half my life, my shadow, my firstborn... No. What then? Your desire for this thing you would have me make. That's all. That is enough. The customer looks at Ecti's bronze face, Ecti's bright dark eyes, and sees nothing but truth. I want this. I want this more than anything. You will not regret this. Tell me about your sister. The customer speaks while Ecti works the bellows. The fire dances and hisses in a broken rhythm that matches her words. Ecti's hammer strokes keep sputtering that pattern. The choker necklace of birds she hammers out is smooth and flowing despite this. The customer can almost hear the wind in the bird's wings, which hold the strong curve of flight and touch only at the extreme tips. The bird's sharp beaks turn toward where the wearer's head will be or open. Their sharp talons clutch the hidden snake which will encircle the wearer's neck. She will want it. Yes, but it isn't finished. How much longer? I can't finish it tonight. Tonight? They'll have missed me. You'll tell them a lie. Come back tomorrow. (laughs) The next day, Ecti works with a tiny chisel, shaping each feather with exquisite precision. The customer talks on and on, stopping when she sees the birds breathing. Now it's ready? On the third visit. Come in. The new customer looks away from the circle of birds more quickly than any other customer who has come to Ecti since its making. She looks warily at the chain which flickers softly 
in the firelight, breathing in its sleep, then at the mirror. In the mirror, she sees nothing but her helmet of close shorn curls, her strong bones and deep eyes, and Ecti's burnished face behind hers. Ecti looks into the same mirror and sees something more. The house is burning, the people running, and the people no longer able to run. You want a weapon. Can you give what it requires? Yes, I can give the metal and the need. Give me the metal and the story. You will not regret this. They come with gifts, with promises. They came until we trusted them. My sister knew better, but we did not listen. My sister. As she tells of her sister's death, the forge fire's heat evaporates the tears before they can fall. The smell of the burned flesh taints the smell of the hot metal on the anvil. Though the customer stands well clear of the fire, and Ecti's bare hands against the glowing metal are unscathed. At sunrise, steam rises from the cooling pail. The knife lies on a stone between Ecti and the customer, glowing with a cold radiance of its own. The customer reaches for it. Not yet. Return tomorrow night. I have waited too long. You have not waited long enough. Today this is a good knife. It will hit anything you wish it to hit, even if you throw it, and it will cut anything it touches. That is all it is today. But if you come again, if you give it more, it will be able to cut the green from the grass or the courage from your bravest enemy or the lie from the mind of your friend without cutting off the grass and without wounding the flesh of your enemy or your friend. The woman stares at Ecti's polished face, seeking a lie she does not find, nods and leaves, head straight up and silent. A narrow-eyed woman strides to meet Ecti. She rests one hand on the hilt of her knife and stretches out the other toward Ecti, palm up. Her eyes flick from Ecti's face to the knife that hangs by the finest gold threads from the ceiling, twisting in the forge heat. You come to steal. You have already stolen. The raiders took everything else from Arua, but you have taken her from herself. Give me that knife you made her. She does not miss it. No, she does not miss it. Or her sister either. We miss Arua. She was our last hope. She would not fear. She would not forgive. With her, even without an enchanted weapon, we had hope. But now, she blinks like a child waking from fever dreams when we mourn, when we plan. We have nothing but the memory of hope. The bleeding stump of a limb. Tell me more, and I can free you of the memory. No more bleeding. No more grieving. No, you'll not steal me too. I do not steal. I take only what is given. And you don't give what you promise. I do not lie and I am careful with my promises. I promise you that you can leave safely now. If you linger... The chain uncoils, stretching towards the thief, who backs slowly to the door. I can't stop you, thief. But someday, someone will steal you from yourself as you stole a Lua. What is left to take? The door opens. The figure in the doorway advances slowly. The flames of the forge subside the embers glow blue hot. In the mirror, Ecti sees her own face in two places, on her shoulders and on the guest. Ecti sees nothing else. What do you want? A mask. mask. Not, Not a pretty, pretty mask, mask to please, please a, lover. a lover. Not, Not a terror, terror mask to frighten away, away an enemy. enemy. A mask, a mask to, hide to hide the burned scars, scars on my cheek. To hide, to hide the, the burning behind, behind my eyes. eyes. To hide, to hide shame, shame and wanting. wanting. No, no, to, to unmake, unmake them. them. A bronze, a bronze face, face that fire cannot scar. That fear, fear cannot, cannot distort. distort. Obsidian in eyes that, that will never, never close and never, never weep. A mask, a mask to, become to become my true face. face. 
Is that all? You know, you know better. better. Gauntlets, Gauntlets too. too. Hands, Hands that, that can touch, touch hot metal, metal without, without pain. pain. Hands, Hands that, that will shape all and be unscarred, unchanged. unchanged. You know the price? As, as you, know you know it. it. As you, as have, you paid have paid it. it I truly did not know the price when I made my choice. You know, you know it, it now, now and you can, can choose, choose again. again. What, what will you do? do? What can I do? I make. I don't unmake. Shadows, not made by the firelight's flickering, chase across the brightness of Ecti's face. You, you made, made the, the knife. knife. Ecti unties the golden thread from the hilt, holds the knife in front of the mirror, next to the reflection of the mask, and sees what might be. In the mirror, the knife's tip lightly traces the outline of the mask, which falls away, showing the face beneath. The colors are almost the same, only softer. Earth, not metal, marked by love, fear, grief, and exhaustion. Burn scars pucker the left cheek, dragging the mouth at a line. Deep in the eyes gleams a spark that is not a reflection of the forge fire. Ecti's mask, facing the mirror, is impassive as ever. Ecti's obsidian eyes do not glow, do not soften, do not weep, cannot. They only look into the mirror. Now, instead of the reflection of Ecti's face, they study the reflection of her workshop. The chain dissolves in light, and an old woman bows her head into her arms and weeps. Behind her tear-streaked face, Ecti sees the shadow of her son, gone with the caravans again, gone where his mother does not hear from him for years at a time. She was so frantic with his loss that she came to Ecti for a chain to bind him to her forever. On the night before her last planned visit, she forgot her need of him, and as she forgot, Ecti forgot the chain that held her longing trapped inside each link. But now... She remembers. The birds on the choker fly off as dusty brown sparrows, and the snake sidewinds across the burning sand. Somewhere, beyond the snake's path, in the shadow of the birds, a smiling woman who holds her nephew on her lap suddenly flinches, then frowns at him and looks venomously at his mother. The knife burns away into Ecti's hand. And in a patched and crowded tent, a blank-eyed woman looks up, strength and light coming into her face. She speaks. The people lean toward her, as though it is midwinter, and she is on fire. Ecti draws a ragged breath, looks away from the mirror, and lets the images it holds unmake themselves. Ecti points the knife towards the figure in the doorway and looks into the mirror again sees the guests being pulled backward into the void, followed by Ecti's memories of customers and by Ecti's just recovered memories of burning. Ecti sees forge fire leaping and the dance of her hands shaping metal. Ecti looks away from the mirror again, touches the knife to the mask, which melts into thin air, leaving not even a wisp of smoke behind. A tear falls on the bronze hands becoming flesh. The forge flames shudder in draft and counterdraft as Ecti's other creations unmake themselves, losing their stories back to their givers. As the knife melts into the air, Ecti stares into the embers, then into the mirror. Her reddened eyes widening as she begins to see what she can craft, now that she is human again, and what she will pay. Well, what a lesson. Once again, thank you to Joanna Michael Hoyt for this great story. We hope to see more stories from her in the future. Let's also highlight our voice talent, C.M. Peters as Ecti and The Guest, Rebecca Mersinger as Woman One, Katie Tatry as Arua, Catherine Vaya as Arua's sister, and Julia Wood as the narrator. The sound design, musical arrangements, and art design were by C.M. Peters. We also have a Patreon. 
we would like to express our eternal love and gratitude to our patrons. You guys help make it possible to bring you quality content and our authors and voice talent more exposure. If you would also like our eternal love and gratitude, along with other goodies, check us out on Patreon. You can find the link to it on our website at BaselineFeed.com. And here's another reminder. You can join us on Discord for more behind-the-scenes stuff. We really do have some of the best folks involved with our Discord community. They're willing to help you with your writing adventures, your voiceover work, and even host game and movie nights. What a place to hang out with like-minded, encouraging folks. A link to our Discord community is included in the show notes. Thank you for joining us, and make sure to tune in every other Saturday on your favorite podcast app to listen to a new episode of Baseline Feed.